For months, Christine Abadir believed she was in a romantic relationship with a man she met online named Jay. But when she flew from Sydney to New Zealand to meet him for the first time, she discovered her boyfriend didn't exist. Watch the video above, how Christine was duped by a catfish for more real-life related news and videos check out Real Life It Never Hit Me I Was Getting Catfished, Christine tells Seven Life in an exclusive interview. The catfish's six-month deception unraveled when the 22-year-old made plans to meet Jay at a nightclub during her travels. My friends kept telling me from the start, he isn't coming out. I was delusional, I had so many feelings of betrayal going on in my mind. I never thought I was catfished until my mates woke me up from my fantasy. I was angry, upset and confused. Her extraordinary story took another twist when she discovered the catfish's real identity. Her boyfriend was actually an internet scammer who had set up fake social media accounts to trick her into a serious relationship. My friends and I tracked the mobile number he gave me and we were able to find the name of the person the number was connected to, she explains. We knew from the moment it hit me, we found out it was a girl. Catfished by a girl to her shock, Christine uncovered her boyfriend was a mystery woman posing as a man all along. I got catfished by a girl. The whole time, it was a girl, she explains. Before her online romance, Christine, who's a content creator with more than one. 9 million TikTok followers, said her life was seemingly normal until she met Jay on social media earlier this year. Basically a part of my job is going live on TikTok during the week and interacting with my followers, she explains. He would always join my live videos so I made him moderator, which is a role you can choose for your followers to block out hate comments. After making him moderator, I introduced him to my friends on Instagram. We started talking from there. I'm not going to lie, his photos drew me in. I found him attractive and we started talking. He flirted with me and it kept going every single day. The catfish spent months building her trust, even becoming good friends with one of Christine's real mates who lives in Germany. After months of chatting via Instagram, Christine says they took their relationship to the next level. We were messaging back and forth for about three to four months before we made our relationship official, she says. He made my life better it's ironic to say but it went better than most, real, relationships I've been in. He was my ideal type. He filled a void by always continuously messaging me and checking up on me. He made my life better and I made his life better. Red flags but she began noticing the red flags shortly into their romance. He started becoming more controlling and possessive, she explains. He was really toxic. He told me I wasn't allowed to hang out with certain guy mates because he had a feeling they liked me or I couldn't wear certain clothes. I wasn't allowed to post certain things on social media. I couldn't do this or that. So it became almost emotionally and mentally abusive. When she tried to call him via video chats, he would come up with an excuse to avoid face-to-face -face contact. Every time I brought FaceTime up he said he didn't like it, he had an android so he'll reveal his face later, Christine says. Weird behavior but it kept getting prolonged and dragged every time I asked to see his face. I found it weird because he would send me photos and videos of his body but never his face. I was however sent audios of him singing and talking and videos of his outfits. I found it normal after a while of not video calling, I thought maybe he just liked texting more. I saw he had photos of himself on his Instagram highlights so I thought that was fine then. His highlights on Instagram looked real and so did all the photos of his body he sent me. Christine says she made plans to meet Jay at a nightclub when she traveled to New Zealand. He told me he was at this club so I go there, I stood outside and I asked him to come out of the club to see me, but he said he wasn't there anymore, he changed clubs, she recalls. The red flags were all there. The penny suddenly dropped when she realized her boyfriend didn't exist. It all hit me at once. She says Dot missed all the signs it was funny because that night we were watching The Girlfriend Who Didn't Exist on Netflix, all the signs in the documentary happened to me. It was crazy. But during our relationship, I feel like I missed the signs because I had that reassurance every time. After the shock discovery, Christine managed to connect with a real man behind the pictures the catfish stole after her TikTok followers rallied behind her to help track him down. 
He is a great guy, he has kids and a girlfriend, she says, adding Jay was not his real name. Surprising turn of events In a surprising turn of events, Christine says she's now friends with the stranger who catfished her. The catfish came out and apologized to me, she says. I still have a lot of questions but I would rather let it go. I have my closure now from both sides of the story, the catfish and the guy behind the photos and videos. By sharing her story, Christine says she wanted to warn everyone about online dating. We live in a world where it's so easy to catfish people. We share too much of ourselves online and we put so much out there on social media like our life, family and friends, she says. It's easy for anyone to use our photos and videos to create a fake persona and target us. Someone can be using your photos without you even knowing. I don't care if people judge me, I just want to spread awareness so someone out there can actually be aware that catfishing happens. I want everyone to watch out because it's serious. Don't be like me Christine says she regrets not ending the relationship sooner after spotting the catfish's controlling and possessive behavior. At first, I thought it was kind of cute because he was being protective of me. But don't be like that, don't be like me, she says. Take that as a red flag, it's not possessive or cute, it's actually toxic and dangerous. In a relationship you should be able to do whatever you want to do. She says the one piece of advice is, if you like someone online, always ask to video call or FaceTime them to see if they exist. Make sure you know who you are actually messaging. The first red flag I noticed during the months of talking was, not once did this person video call me, not once did this person FaceTime me or give me their number. But when I took this person serious, I asked for their number. This person gave me their number thinking I couldn't call them because I'm in Sydney and they're in NZ. I'm so glad I asked for their number because we were able to track the catfish down. Silver lining despite being stood up by the catfish overseas, there was a silver lining for Christine. Ironically I just started a long distance with a man online after we actually met in person in New Zealand, she says.